Hello, my name is Michelle Curiel from Gemini Designs and we're going to be learning some watercolor techniques today. So before we start, I just wanted to introduce you um, some supplies that I use pretty consistently. Um, I would say that with watercolor, the most important thing is to have good quality supplies. It definitely changes the way that your art comes out. Um, first off with your paper, this is one that I use that you can get pretty much anywhere um, at Michael's or a local craft store. Um, it's a 140 pound paper, so it's really thick. Um, and what you're looking for with watercolor paper is um, this texture that you see on it. I don't know if you can see it in the video. Um, you wanna have a really thick, heavy paper um, because it'll hold the water better. If you use something that is really flat, um, you'll notice that the watercolor will not um, soak in well to the paper. So you want to be sure that you have something thick and textured. Um, if you're shopping for a different brand, that's okay. But thick and textured is what you want. Um, for watercolors, I use Winsor Newton Professional Grades. If you're just learning, not a big deal. I learned off of Crayola. Um, just like a regular school pack for the longest time. But these are um, some great watercolors from Amazon. Um, they're from Prima Marketing. Um, they come in like little tiny packs. Um, you can travel with them. You can mix your colors on the side. And this is another pack that I use. Um, it's another travel kit. You've got your sponge on the side to collect your water. And these are from Koi Watercolors. Also, you can find those on um, Amazon or another type of art website. Um, and then you'll also need some pretty good brushes. I only use round tip. So they're the ones that are pointy. These are Princeton. Um, I've got a 16. The bigger the number, the bigger the brush. So I use a 16 pretty rarely. This one I don't use that much but these are the two that I use all the time. So I've got a six round tip and a two round tip here. These ones I use all the time. Um, I learned off of these ones. Um, these are synthetic hair, so it's made from a plasticky texture. Um, they're a little bit cheaper, but when you use these, they don't hold water as well as these ones do. So it might be good to, if you're serious with watercolor, to just invest in um, a higher quality brush because it will help you out in the long run. And then before we start, of course, you need a cup of water for your watercolors. Um, I do recommend using two cups, one for hot colors and one for cool colors, just so when you go to grab more water, it doesn't get all muddy colored. But today I just use one since we'll be sticking to one color palette. And then um, a paper towel you'll need or um, a type of towel you don't mind getting um, some paint on is fine as well. So there are a couple different techniques to watercolor. Today we're going to be learning the wet on wet technique. I love this technique because it's really um, authentic to watercolor and uh, you can't really find it in other types of media. So this is what watercolor is really all about. We're going to be learning um, how to load up your brush with water and control the paint that you have on your brush. Um, so this video will uh, first start with some ways to learn this technique and then we'll get into actually painting a picture. All right, so go ahead and grab your full strength color. You're going to wet your brush all the way and then just get rid of some of that excess water on the edge of your cup. So we want to start off with a really strong color. So you're gonna swipe the belly of your brush um, along the color about two or three times until you actually see the color on your brush. So you can see that it is, um, it's blue at the tip there. It's got the color loaded in, nothing's dripping off of the brush and it's ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make a really strong blue square here. And I actually want it to be a little bit darker. This is the thing with watercolor too. Once you get it on the paper, you can really tell what color it is. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab some more. Make it a little bit darker so we can make sure we can see the transition here. So we got our swatch of blue here. 
And then we're gonna work on lightening this block here. So the more you dip your brush into the water, the more it washes it off, obviously. So you'll have less color to work with. So we're gonna go ahead and dip our brush in once, get rid of some of that excess water and then pull out the color. See how it gets lighter? Pull out the color. And then we're gonna do it another time. Get some more water out, wipe it on the side of your cup. Pull even more water out. It's continuing to get lighter and lighter. Do it one more time. And you can see it pretty much goes to white. So you can practice this a couple times just to get the transition right. Um, this is really important for watercolor because this technique is used pretty much for your entire painting process. So let's try that one more time. So you're gonna dip your brush in your water, get rid of some of that excess water, grab a cool color. I'm gonna go with red this time. This one's really bright. So you can see I've got the red loaded up there. Go ahead and make your vibrant block to start off with. And then dip in, get some of that excess water off and drag the color out. Go ahead and do it again and drag the color out some more. There you go. So this is a technique of um, lightening. You always want to light, lighten with water. If you lighten with the color white on your watercolor palette, it'll turn into this muddy, kind of gross, faded color. Um, never use um, the color white for watercolor. You're, you'll probably never need it. So when you're lightening, you always want to just add some water. You don't need to go in there and really swish it around. You just need to dip and then get some of that excess water off. Um, and that should do the trick. And you just pull the water color out and you should go ahead and be able to lighten it. So yeah, never use white. White is a no-no in um, watercolor. All right, so this next wet on wet technique will be using a darker color. So um, I'm just gonna use um, the same blue that I had before. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some black to it. So it's okay if you're um, painting on top of another color here, it always just washes off with more water. Um, so you can see I have my, my tip loaded up pretty well. And I'm gonna go ahead and make another swatch. Oh, I love this color. So we're gonna make this nice dark, dark swatch of um, blue mixed with black, something that's really aggressively dark. And then we're gonna wash the color out almost completely in our cup. So all that we're left with is this sort of pale blue. And we're gonna start away from this color swatch. So start just next to it. And then we're gonna watch the color sort of just explode into each other. This is a beautiful thing about watercolor that makes it so fun is that the colors just really um, bleed into each other and it makes it just such a fun experience. So we're gonna watch them bleed in together. And this is how we're gonna work on blending with wet on wet is using water and sort of just doing this like poking technique. And you'll see how the water um, all the way, it kind of drips into it all the way over here. So just by poking it from here, you can see it dragging all the way out here. So this is a fun technique. And then if we wanna add more color to this um, swatch over here, we're just gonna grab some more blue and you can see how the color again bleeds on this side. So this can add some texture in our future paintings, um, some shadowing. And yeah, you'll pretty much just, um, I just do sort of like this poking motion and it'll spread your water across the page. All right, so just like anything else, um, you can go ahead and just fill up a random page practicing these two ways to transition color. Um, you'll definitely need these for doing wet on wet um, painting. So make sure that you have some control um, with feeling 
um, dipping your brush in, getting that excess water out, grabbing more color, adding it in. Practice it a couple times um, and this technique will be very helpful for you. So practice makes usually perfect. Um, so you can yeah get this down and we'll move on to the next thing. So the previous picture was just a nice example of what we're going to be painting today. So we're going to be painting um, a mountain scene with a reflection on the lake. So you have to kind of divide your paper just directly in half. Um, this technique we'll be using with wet on wet will be usually uh, okay, let's take two. So as you saw in the previous picture, we will be painting three. So in that previous picture, you saw what we're going to be painting today. So we'll be painting a um, almost monochromatic a blue mountain scene with a reflection in the lake. Um, these paintings I've usually been asked to create a lot in very large um, canvases for people's homes um, and it's really fun just because it uses a simple wet on wet water technique that you can um, participate in today. So um, first what we're going to do is grab um, some of that blue color. So go ahead and Dip your brush in, get some of the excess water off like we learned before. And we don't want our color to be super dark. So we're just going to swipe it across the page just a couple times. You can go ahead and use a ruler if you would like, but I'm going to trust myself here. Um, so go ahead and draw yourself a nice line across the paper. It doesn't have to be all the way through. If it's scattered like this, it'll just make that... Um, reflection in the lake be a little bit more um, natural. So we're just going to kind of map out where our mountain is going. So this mountain is going to be the first layer of mountains. So it's going to be darker. So go ahead and get creative with this. You can, um, you know, use something that you've seen in nature before if you've been anywhere around mountains, but um, we're going to go down all the way over here and we're going to kind of make a valley here so we're going to paint another mountain over here so you can see that my lines aren't super dark and they're pretty scattered just makes it look more rocky um, and we're just going to focus on this first uh, mountain right here so I'm actually going to grab my larger brush so this is the big guy that I was talking about before if you want to use a medium size, not a big deal. It'll just take a little bit longer. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and dip my brush in and grab more of that watercolor and just go ahead and begin to paint very, pretty basically, you're just going to fill up this entire mountain area with this blue color. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can go ahead and Use different type of brush strokes. Once you get to the edge here, just remember you want to keep it clean. So go ahead and drag your brush carefully around the edges. So now that we've got our mountains pretty much filled in, we're going to be adding some darker color to this now. So um, you'll want to stay darker on the mountains at the bottom um, and the top, but we're going to go ahead and kind of clean up these lines on the outside. And then we'll go ahead and add our darker color in. So I'm just going to take that blue and we always darken with black or um, maybe like a blue black something that you have that's close enough to black um, go ahead and um, let me show you my palette here go ahead and dip into your blue and then you can do like a swipe of black over here go ahead and add some more water and we're just going to do that Kind of poking technique again so your page should still be wet don't let it dry um, you'll want to do this while it's still wet so you've got your blue black color 
kind of poking along this the edges here. See how it's bleeding? That's a good thing. You will want to make sure though, um, when you're poking this color around, you don't want to add any dots really, um, at least not for this painting because it will dry that way um, and it'll make your eye kind of go directly to that spot. So make sure it's still spread out enough. And then you can go ahead and once you've got the edges pretty dark, just drag the rest of that color out and up, just like we learned in that first technique video. You're just gonna drag that color up. If you want it to be lighter, go ahead and remember and dip your water in just about once and then continue to drag the color up the mountain. All right, sometimes too, it depends on the paper. I'm using um, a paper that is pretty decent. Like I was saying, you can get it anywhere, but um, it does start to pick up a little bit when you add so much water on it. So this is why it's important to have good quality materials when you're doing watercolor. It's the most important because you want a water or a paper that's gonna hold that water in really well. You can see this one's already starting to pick up a little bit. It is decent for everyday watercolor, but um, but if you're hoping to get serious with watercolor, I'd suggest going with um, a, a heavier paper. All right, so you can see we've got some texture in our mountain. The edges are pretty dark. Go ahead and do that again. Grab that um, blue color and make sure it's wet. And then with the black, and then go ahead and make that line at the bottom pretty strong again. And we're gonna add water to our brush, get out, rid of that excess water and pull it up again. And when you do this, um, you do start off with that strong line and you can see that you can tell where that line started and it started to bleed again. So that's what we wanna see on this painting. You wanna see um, those beginning lines with the water bleeding up. So this is what I mean when I say that with watercolor, you can make mistakes. Um, if you do something that's a little too aggressive in color, if it's way too dark, you can always just before it dries, um, grab some more water and pull the color out. Um, with this technique, it's pretty free form. You can go ahead and make a lot of things with um, just one color and it, uh, it turns out to be really beautiful. All right, so this is gonna be about it for the first layer of the mountain. I just want the edges to be more dramatic and dark, so I'm gonna keep adding some more blue-black to the edge. Maybe I want some up here too. And then if you want your mountain to have more um, texture in it, you can see like the parts that go down, maybe you wanna add some more blue black here and let that bleed and you can tell that i added quite a bit of black in that one still not sure if i really like it but i'm just gonna keep spreading it around because that's the beauty of watercolor Let's go ahead and grab it, spread it around. I want some more shadow over here. So I'm gonna take a little bit more black and just dab it here. And again, maybe that's a little too dark. So I'm just gonna grab some more water, spread it around. And 
And with my mountains, I like to do that pretty much any time my line goes towards the bottom of the paper. So um, it adds just a little bit more depth to the way that your mountain looks. So I'm going to add some more black in here. There we go. And I love to see that the black color go into the blue. It looks really pretty. And we're just going to do the same thing on this side. So you add some over here. There we go. So you can see this side, this part of the paper isn't really taking in the water very well, but it's okay. It kind of adds in a nice texture to your mountain. So it works for the better for us. All right. And you can tell right here that you can really see that edge of the bleed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take more water and just spread it out some more. And that'll really work in our favor with the edges. So we do wanna see the kind of dark clumps on the edges of the mountain, but not necessarily in the middle. That'll kind of throw off the shading a bit. So let's go ahead and go on to the further layer of mountain. So um, since things are, when things are further away, you wanna make them a lighter color. Um, just like if you're, you know, if you're out in nature, go ahead and enjoy looking at the way that you see light hitting things um, and how you see shadows. It really changes the way that you view nature once you start painting it. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do something lighter as a second layer of mountains. And we're gonna do the same technique. So I'm gonna grab a lighter blue color and just go ahead and make another mountain top over here. Just like that. Maybe I want it to pick up again too, so I'll do that. And then just drag this color, drag this color out of the line that you just created. Maybe grab some more. Yep, and do the same technique. This one doesn't have to be as um, shaded and dark as before since it is in the distance. So we're just gonna um, do one line, pull out the color, and be careful of the edges here. These are um, about dry right now, so they won't bleed into this one. So we wanna make sure that these colors don't suck up into this mountain top. All right, and you can see that just from painting this outline, I haven't grabbed any more color. I'm just picking up color from my water and pulling it out of the line. So now that we've done our first layer of mountains and our second layer in the distance, we're gonna begin doing that reflection of the water. So the thing about reflections, um, they're gonna mirror each other. So whenever something's closer to the object that it's mirroring, it's gonna be darker over here. Um, and then it's gonna continue to lighten up. And um, the reflection will be lighter. It's not gonna have as much color or saturation that's up here. Um, so what you're gonna do is grab um, just the color that you started with. So just that original blue color that I had. Go ahead and swipe it in your color and then dip and dab on the side of your cup. We don't want it to be really saturated since this is the reflection. And then too, what I like to do is if I'm really unsure of where my color's at, I just go ahead and dab it on my paper towel so I can see that there's not enough blue in it. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab more that looks a little too dark, add some more water. Okay, that looks about where we need it to be. 
So I'm going to just, just think of it as you have a mirror right here and it's just reflecting right back on the page. So this is about probably an inch, maybe more um, away from this middle line. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. And again, it doesn't have to be exact lines. You can do dashes. You can see the mountain goes up and goes down. And then it does this little reach all the way over here. And do the same thing on the other side. It starts about a half inch away. It goes up. And then it kind of plateaus and goes back up again. There we go. That's pretty much all we need. So now we're going to go ahead and drag the color out of this line as faded as it is. It'll look just how we want it when we pull this color out of it. So this way, it almost looks like it's just your paper, but when you're from a distance, you can tell that there is blue color there. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my big brush again. If you don't have a brush this big, it's really fine. I maybe use this, I don't know, one out of three times when I'm painting, not even. But it does help for things like wet on wet technique because it grabs a lot of water. And then yeah, go ahead and just fill this reflection area with water. All right, now we're going to get into the fun part of watching the colors really bleed. So I'm going to grab some more water, fill this area up. Right now our water is kind of pale, pale blue color, so you can see it on your paper. So make sure you don't get it over on this side. If you have a good brush, it won't drip on your page, but should be good right now. All right, so we can tell that this is a reflection of our mountain. So we're gonna start pretty dark over here. The thing that I like to do with my um, reflections is leave a little bit of space in between your first mountain and your second reflection mountain. So I'm gonna grab my medium size six brush, grab some water, um, grab a swipe of your blue color and then yeah just leave a little bit of space so you can see that line in between and then just watch the color bleed it's so fun to watch that every time and then just pull out that color that you just put on And since our lakes, when you see reflections, it almost looks like you just see lines going across. Do the same thing with your brush. So all the way across. Because when this dries, you will be able to tell what way your brush was going. So I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Grab a swipe of that blue. Brush it all the way across your page and then pull out that color. Looks like you need some more water. And as much water as you put on it, you can sort of tell that it dries pretty fast. So you'll wanna work pretty quickly just so that nothing dries the way that you don't want it to. Adding water to something that you messed up on does help, but sometimes if you wait too long, there's not too much you can do to fix it. So this is great. This is what we wanna see with that bleed look. This side doesn't have it too much, so I'm gonna add some more water Another swipe of that blue, careful with it. it, might be too dark, and go ahead and do that poking technique that we did before. We need 
need some more blue. Perfect. And we might want it to be just a tad bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue. Oops, that's a little too dark. So grab some water, spread it out. See, watercolor is perfect for me because I tend to not really be a perfectionist, but I do like things to look nice. So if I mess up, you can just fix it again. All right, so that's pretty much what we want for our reflection. You can add more dark color in um, up here. But for the most part, you want to keep your reflection dark on the edges and where it meets the mountain. So you don't want to have like a big dark spot up here because that wouldn't really make sense with how um, shadows and reflection work. So I'm going to keep dabbing a little bit more, dragging it across the page. Let the water do its thing. All right, so that's about what we want it to be. I'm gonna go ahead and begin the next reflection, which is up here. So I'm gonna grab my other blue color that I had. Let's see, this is our middle line. That's about a little less than an inch, I'd say. And we're gonna make that line again. That's not very defined. It goes up and down and up again and back down. And then I'm going to pull this out. Since this is pretty far away from our beginning line, we don't have to worry about the bottom as much. We just want to know that this reflection is present and still there. So drag out the water on the edges. We started off with a pretty defined line and now we're just pulling out that color. You want to get pretty close up to it. And it's okay if your reflection isn't perfect, it's a reflection, so sometimes they look distorted. There we go. And then I got a little bit of blue over here that I don't really like, so I can't fully erase it. This was from earlier when I put my hand in some watercolor, but it's okay. We're just gonna take some water, go over it, and then take your paper towel and dab it off. That's usually how I get rid of something. So just in case you make a mistake. All right, so there you have it. There's your mountain watercolor um, painting that you can hang up in your home. Take pictures of it, put it in the comments. Thanks for joining and thanks to Aurora Public Art for hosting this. Um, I hope you guys stay creative and stay safe out there, wear your masks and um, continue to paint and draw and be creative to um, spread joy, but also to keep yourself busy. So we'll see you later until next time. Bye.